Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll do step three of the schematic design workflow, which is about annotating, arranging, and associating. Now, the good thing about KickUp 8, or at least one of the good things, is that uh, more automation is available to the user during the design process. One of those automations has to do with annotation. And as you can see, the symbols that I've dropped onto the sheet in the previous lecture are already annotated. That means that they've got unique identifiers. They don't have question marks anymore. They've got actual numbers next to the designators. And that means that annotations are complete. So for us, then it means that we don't have to do a annotation. We can just continue with arrangement and with the association. With the arrangement, since this circuit is very simple actually i've pretty much done it as well in the previous lecture so this is overall the position of the symbols as i want them in order to do the wiring in the next step and if i bring up the grid you can see that the symbols are actually properly aligned onto the grid which is going to make wiring easy now the only thing that is a problem at the moment that I need to fix is this symbol here. In the previous lecture, I accidentally dropped an incorrect switch onto the project. This is not the switch that I want to use. So I was thinking whether I should re-record the previous lecture or just accept the error and show you how to fix it in this lecture. And I decided to just keep the previous lecture and then show you how to fix an incorrect symbol in this lecture, essentially how to fix a symbol. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KitKat course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KitKat from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. Of course, you've got two options here. The first option would be to simply delete the symbol that is incorrect and then add a new symbol just like we did in the previous lecture. So that's one way to do it. Another way, I'm just going to hit the Z, uh, Command Z button to undo the deletion. Another way to do it is to retain the incorrect symbol, double click on it to bring up the symbol properties and then use this option here called change symbol you can click on this uh, button here that you bring up the change symbols window and this window contains powerful functionality because it allows you to make bulk changes to symbols i have a lecture showing you how to use this particular window in the recipes section of this course but in this case i'm going to use it to change one symbol only instead of a whole lot of symbols in bulk so you can see here, I've selected the option change selected symbol. The selected symbol right now is this, the one that I double clicked on. And in the second step, it allows me to choose or to find a new library identifier. So essentially I'm going to be changing the old symbol for a new symbol. So let's click on this button here to bring up again, the symbol chooser. And now I'm going to search for the correct switch which is SW, DP, ST. This one, uh, let's, I believe, yeah, this one right here. Again, it's got two units, but I only need one of those, and it's just a simple on-off switch. All right, and now you can see that I'm changing the DPDT for a DPST. Everything else here, will be the same except for the reference. The reference will remain as it is uh, as switch 1A and the value. So click on change and done. There you go, we've got a new switch. I corrected the mistake that I made earlier without affecting the reference designator, which is important if you've got a busy schematic and uh, you have carefully assigned the reference designators and you don't want to change them if you change a symbol. Okay, so that's done. I've got a correct symbol now. Annotation is completed. So let's do the association now. So the association step has to do with choosing a footprint that we want to assign to a symbol. 
So remember that the footprint is what defines the physical attributes of a component and we will be working with footprints in the layout editor in the next uh, part of this project. So there are several ways to associate a symbol with a footprint. Uh, you can do that individually. So for example, let's go for the LED. You can double click on the LED to bring up its symbol properties. And right here, you'll see that there is a property for the footprint. There is a default selection here for a three millimeter through hole component LED, or I can change that if I'm not happy with that by clicking on the footprint library chooser. So here you can again use the filter up there to find the appropriate footprint to associate with the symbol. So I'm going to type LED and uh, I want a through hole LED component. You can see the options that I have. Just going to uh, have a little bit more space for the description like this. And uh, I'm thinking for a larger LED size, maybe a five millimeter. Yeah, that would do. So let's say that you want to use this five millimeter LED footprint for your symbol. Just select it, double click on it. And as you can see now it is assigned. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to click OK to exit. Another way that is more efficient, especially for bigger, more complicated circuits, is to use the assign footprints window. This is a lot more efficient. So you can see that the this window in the middle pane shows you the symbols that need to be associated. One of them right here, the LED, is already associated with this particular footprint. So then you've got three more that don't have an association. So you can use the pane on the left that contain the various footprint libraries. And then the pane on the right shows the footprints that are members of this particular selected library that are compatible with the selected symbol. So I want to take a moment to explain what these footprint filters do up here. So let's say that I've selected the battery cell and, and I want to find an appropriate footprint for this particular symbol. What this filter on the right does, filter by library, is that it confines the items that you see here in the right pane based on uh, what the selected library is on the left. Right now it's enabled. If I disable it, you'll see that the items that appear in the right pane are basically all of the footprints that are available in KiCad. I've got about two, two and a half thousand items here, regardless of the library that I have selected. So notice that the background on this button is off. If I click on any of the libraries on the left side, like that, uh, the library filter is automatically re-enabled. And then what you see in the right pane are specifically the footprints that belong to this library that I have selected already. So this sometimes is confusing because you might disable the library's filter and then do something else right here and not realize that the filter is automatically re-enabled because you've selected a specific library. Now the second button I also find important, I always keep it enabled, has to do with the pin count. So the, I'm just going for the, uh, let's say the connectors right there. So what you see in the right pane, if the middle filter, the pin count filter is selected, are only the uh, footprints with the correct number of pins as required by the selected symbol. So this battery cell, for example, has got two pins. So the footprints that you see here are footprints that also have two pins only. So if I disable that filter, you'll see you've got all sorts of other types of connectors with two or any other number of pins, like more than two pins. So I keep that selected. It just helps find things that actually fit with the symbol that I have used. Now the left filter right here, the symbol footprint filter, I don't find this one very reliable because it depends on the symbol itself containing information about the types of footprints that it works with. So some symbols do have such information embedded in the symbol file, some others do not. So I don't find this very useful. I keep it enabled and it seems to sometimes work 
and some other times not work but uh, the most important filters are these two and of course to being able to go through the footprint libraries to narrow down exactly what you need so let's go back to actually doing the associations now that uh, i've said all that i want a footprint for the battery cell symbol so i'm going to search for battery right there i've got my two filters selected i want a footprint for a battery of size 2032 so maybe i can use this search filter here as well i'm going to type in 2032 and that narrows down my options quite a lot so let's see done some research earlier and I'm going to go for the uh, battery holder uh, Keystone 15832 that is the one that I want to look at you can also have a look at the uh, 3D representation sometimes it is available there you go yeah that looks good that's the one that I want so I'm going to double click on it to assign it so now the battery cell has the battery holder footprint associated let's continue with the resistor this is going to be a through hole resistor so i'm going to look for resistors in the footprint libraries through hole remove this text filter i'm going to look for a 3.6 millimeter resistor one of those up here is going to be horizontal 3.6 millimeter then 0204 I'm going to go for a slightly longer one so the width just to make it easier to handle 7.62 millimeters that's it double click and assign it and finally I've got the the switch so here I want to use a button switch so let's scroll for that should be down here for switches or actually up for button switches there you go through hole again now with this switch remember that this switch only has two pins and i have selected the number of pins filter so all of these examples are compatible with my two pin symbol the problem is that i don't really like any of those and if i unselect the two pin filter gives me a lot more options the option that i am interested in is this one here the omron uh, b3f that looks like this let's do the 3d so it's just a tactile button and it's got four pins and uh, with this filter enabled the filtered footprints pane did not return this option so i had to disable it to be able to get to it so just keep in mind that sometimes this filter doesn't do exactly what you think it might do so if you're not able to find what you're looking for just try out enabling or disabling to see what other options become available the interesting thing here is that even though the symbol has two pins the um, uh, some of the options that come back I actually double clicked and selected that, but just wanted to look at what it what this particular footprint looks like. It's got four pins. And uh, it did return this particular footprint that's got four pins instead of two, and not the Omron one, which also has, as you can see here, four pins. So it's a quirk, I believe, but uh, just be mindful that these filters are not perfect and you, you do need to play around with them. So double click the Omron option and uh, I've got now all of my associations set. Uh, don't click OK, just click on apply and save and then click OK and that's it, you're now done.